CRM Onboarding Part 1. Hello and welcome to this video. Often when we are presented with many features and settings, we tend to get lost and take time to decide what to get started with. To accelerate the process of setting up, we will go through a checklist to ensure that your CRM has the bare minimum setup required to get your business up and running. With this as the base, you will be able to set up a working CRM system quickly and then build from there depending on your requirements. This checklist includes adding company details, setting up business hours, adding users and defining their roles and profile, setting up some basic customization, and automation processes. These tasks need to be performed before getting data into your CRM account. So here is where we need to start. The company details from the setup page. Here you must enter the following name, address, company logo, and contact information. Helpful for pulling up company information in email templates and signatures. Time zone, which is instrumental in sending email notifications and scheduling reminders. Currency locale, this is essential for entering amount fields such as deal amount, product price, etc. Super admin, which is a user with admin privileges who is the point of contact for all billing and subscription-related communications from Zoho, and business hours, to keep a check on the user's availability when workflows are triggered and tasks are assigned. These are some more advanced settings under company details that we will skip, as they are not mandatory now. For example, multi-currency, which is required only if your business deals with different currencies, Fiscal year, which is essential in determining the forecasts. Hierarchy preference, which is set to role hierarchy by default and can also be set to reporting hierarchy. Based on the hierarchy, CRM data is accessible and shared among users. Next, let's invite users. But before doing that, you need to set up roles and profiles, which are two fundamental concepts in user management. You certainly don't want junior level staff members to access their manager's confidential data. Therefore, it's important to map users to the correct roles and privileges in CRM so that data sharing and permissions are controlled efficiently across the system. Roles can be accessed from Setup, Security Control, Roles. You can replicate your company's hierarchical structure in Roles. This defines access to the data in your CRM account. Here's a sample role hierarchy with CEO, Sales Managers, Sales Reps, and Sales Assistants. Now, according to this hierarchy, the CEO can see everyone's data as they occupy the topmost role in the hierarchy. The sales managers can see the sales reps and sales assistants' data, but not the CEO's data. Profiles can be accessed from Setup, Security Control, Profiles. It's a collection of permissions that gives users the access to different features in CRM. Here's a sample sales profile where a user is given access to view and create leads, contacts, accounts, and deals, but does not have the permission to delete those records. Additionally, the sales profile does not have the access to manage users and customize various elements in Zoho CRM. Now let's invite one of the users, Jill Perry. As an administrator, you need to add the basic personal detail, then map her to the appropriate role and profile. If you want to capture some more specific details about the users in your company, you can add custom fields in the user layout. Next is enabling data sharing rules. By default, data sharing in CRM follows the order established in the role hierarchy. For example, consider this role hierarchy, CEO, sales managers, sales reps, assistant. According to this default setup, sales reps can see the sales assistant's data, but not that of the sales managers or the CEO. However, assume that you must overrule the role hierarchy because of some unique requirements. For example, sales reps shouldn't access any of their manager's data except for leads. To address this, the administrator can configure data sharing exceptions to the role hierarchy. Exceptions can be of two types. Module level exceptions using data sharing rules under security control. If you wish to share an entire module with a user in a junior role, you can write data sharing rules like this record shared from, record shared to, and the access type. Record level exceptions. If you wish to share only a few records with individual users, 
you can use the Share option from the Records Details page to provide full access, read and write, or read only access. Note that the user needs the Share permission in the profile to perform this. Now let's take a look at the access restrictions for the Zoho CRM account. Zoho takes privacy and data security very seriously, and your data is secure on our servers. In addition to our stringent security measures, we also allow users to configure their own security settings in their Zoho accounts. Here are the top two settings that you can immediately set up in your CRM account. Allowed IPs. Let's say you want your team members to access the CRM only from your office and would like to prevent logins from other places. You can configure the IP addresses from which logins are allowed. When a user tries to sign in to CRM from any IP address other than the one set up, CRM will restrict the entry. Two-factor authentication. TFA adds another layer of security to your Zoho accounts. Once you enable two-factor authentication, in addition to your regular account password, you will be prompted to enter a one-time password to log in. This one-time password can be received as an SMS on your phone or via Zoho's one-auth application. Once these are set up, you can move to some basic customizations and automations. Customizing modules. While Zoho CRM is designed to accommodate most of the generic sales needs of an organization, the default setup may not be enough at all times. Each company comes with a unique set of requirements, so it is advisable to work on some basic customization before you import your data. The action items for basic module customization are rename tabs, edit existing fields, add new custom fields, edit field properties, specify field permissions, and set validation rules. Let's go through each of them. Rename tabs. While a sales organization requires modules such as leads, contacts, and accounts, a university does not use this terminology. The equivalent of leads for them could be applicants, and successful applicants who have enrolled will be converted to students. Edit existing fields. The lead status field may have to be edited as applicant status to reflect the applicant review stages at Zilker University. Similarly, you can rename and edit existing fields and trash the ones that you don't need. Add custom fields. Zilker may require a whole bunch of new fields to be added to their applicant's module apart from the ones that exist. Here are some of the most commonly used field types and examples of their use in the context of Zilker University. Single line field. Applicant Enrollment ID, Picklist field, that would be Department, Lookup field, that would map to Courses, Currency field, we would use that for Application fee, Date field, we'll change that to Date of Application. When you edit the properties of a field, there are a bunch of options that are useful. We can go through some very useful ones. Edit field property and use this one to mark a field as mandatory. Do not allow duplicate values helps you to mark a field as unique. With this, you can prevent duplicate records in your CRM. For example, email address, passport number, or social security number are examples of unique values that can help you prevent duplicate records. If you have enabled GDPR compliance settings, this option can help make the field sensitive. You can specify permissions for users at the field level too. For example, consider this field called student's total score. This can be edited by professors, but can only be viewed by office admins. So you can specify read-write access for the professor's profile and read-only access for the management staff profile. Set validation rules for any key fields in order to ensure that the CRM arrests any kind of unacceptable data, even as it's being entered into the CRM. For example, let's say that Zilker University does not accept an application of a student with a GPA of less than three for any of their courses. In such a case, Zilker could set a validation rule for the GPA field that states, if GPA is less than 3, show suitable error message. There are many more options in customization, but it's ideal to get started with these items and configure more settings as you go. Moving on, you can set up some basic automation workflows to save time and cut down on most of your manual efforts, such as sending routine emails, tasks, and reminders. For example, as soon as contacts are created in your CRM, you may want to send them a bunch of welcome emails. Or, when a deal worth more than $25,000 is created, you may want to trigger email notifications to the CEO and sales manager. 
These can be set up using workflow rules. Then, perhaps leads based on cold calls have to be assigned to a specific person in your team the moment they are added to the CRM. This can be done with the help of assignment rules. There could be such routine actions that need to be automated the moment you import data. So it's a good practice to set up these automation workflows even before you get your data in. Next up is emails and templates. Emails without an argument remains the primary means of communication in any business. So when you have a long list of emails, how do you know which ones to attend to first? Now it's not humanly possible to remember all of your customers and details of a deal, which makes it hard to prioritize the emails. That's why you need the sales context for your communication with your customers so that you can prioritize. Setting up email in Zoho CRM provides just that, the required context. To set up email, go to Setup, Channels, Email, and configure your email account via IMAP. Enter your email account, password, and other related details, and you're in. With your email account configured under the Email tab, you can now send and receive emails from CRM and add follow-up sales activities from the same tab with absolutely no need to switch between applications. If you have a common email address that you need to use to communicate with customers, simply activate this as your organization email address. You'll find this under Setup, Channels, Email, Organization Emails. After you've set up your email account, it's time to create some templates that are commonly used for sending emails. You can include merge fields in the appropriate places so that the email is personalized. These email templates can be associated to workflow rules, mass emails, autoresponders, macros, and other similar features. We've come to an end of this first video in the CRM onboarding training series. As a next step, try creating a role and a profile with suitable permissions and assign it to a new user you add a couple of fields to capture information specific to your business process, some workflow rules and assignment rules with the examples explained earlier, and an email template that you want to send to your leads.